Hey guys, today I'm out here at the Klein Point Platform Mound site near Roosevelt Lake in Central Arizona to see if we can figure out how ancient Salado polychrome pottery was fired. We don't know everything about Salado polychrome, but we do know that it was manufactured only at certain locations. And some of those locations produced a massive amount of it that was then traded out across a broad area. This was one of those villages where a large amount of Salado polychrome was being made and traded outward. So it stands to reason that around here somewhere, there should be evidence of these primitive kilns, these surface pottery firings. And I'm here to look for those today. While the northern southwest has their trench kilns, here in the southern southwest, there's been almost nothing found archeologically to indicate how pottery is fired. There's been some tantalizing evidence in a few places where archaeologists have speculated that something was a kiln, but the evidence, in my opinion, was not very good. Really, the only hard evidence of pottery firing is at Snake Town, which is a Holocom site, so the technology for firing pottery was probably quite a bit different from here at this platform mound where Salado pottery was made. The pottery kilns that were found at Snake Town uh, were shallow pits, uh, there was a lot of oxidized and fired cracked rock. There was a lot of broken sherds and ash and char. So pretty much exactly what I would expect to find at a prehistoric firing site. Now let's look at what some of the historic and current Native American cultures in the southern southwest do for firing. Now this first picture is a Mojave firing from historic times. Uh, it's quite a deep pit compared to some of the others I'm going to show you. Uh, but it looks like the pottery is stacked above the coals, in this case on a grate, lifting that pottery above the coals. So pottery stacked above the coals, and then we can't really see it because it's burned down here, but somehow the wood was stacked around it. Now moving on to some Odom firings, I have quite a few pictures here. And once again, we have a shallow pit. Uh, we have the pottery stacked up above the coals, and then we have the wood stacked around the pottery in a teepee-like fashion. All the old um, examples here all seem pretty consistent in that. Moving farther south and east, we're going to look at some Tarahumara firings here. And uh, once again, uh, in this case, I, it looks like there's no pits. It's stacked right on the surface of the ground. The pottery is stacked above the coals again, uh, and then the wood stacked around it. And it looks like in the Tarahumara's case, the preferred fuel is pine bark which is interesting because cottonwood bark is uh, often sought after among the Native American groups in Arizona. So, so it looks like bark is a very desirable firing fuel, pine bark being probably more common in Tarahumara country than down here in Southern Arizona. I wanted to show you how impressively tall this platform mound is. This is a massive amount of material that was all carried in here by human labor and built up into this huge mound on which then there were structures built as well. So if you were on top of one of those structures, you'd be another six feet higher than this. This is after at least five, 600 years of abandonment. Okay, now I'm out here on the floodplain of Tonto Creek, very nearby the ruins, just below the ruins. There's no hope of finding any evidence of pottery firing here on this floodplain. This was an active floodplain for 500 years after the village was abandoned, getting flood debris and sediment washed on top of it over that period of time. But now it's actually the top end of Roosevelt Lake. So occasionally this area floods by the lake and debris washes in. So this floodplain is literally strewn with driftwood that comes in on the lake. So it wouldn't matter even if there were whole ruins out here or irrigation ditches you're not going to find much archaeological evidence on this floodplain anymore. There's no way you're going to find any evidence of pottery firing, and it's probably underneath all this debris at this point. If we look at existing communities that have a pottery tradition, or at least did historically in the Southwest, it was more common for the potters to carry the pots, the greenware pottery, to the fuel than to carry the fuel to the pots. And that's why we often see Back in the olden days, they would often carry their pots away to fire them away from the village where fuel was more abundant. I was up on Antelope Mesa uh, in Hopi country last year with my friend Bobby Silas. And we looked at some kilns, prehistoric kilns in that area. The village was up on top of the mesa and down below, maybe quarter to a half mile away from the village, uh, 
there were coal seams. And right next to the coal seams were these piles of broken sherds and oxidized rock where they were firing their pottery or where they fired the pottery for generations. So there was quite a bit of evidence there. And I think we're looking at something similar because these large Salado villages were producing a volume of pottery for trade, just like those Hopi villages on Antelope Mesa were. And so there would probably be abundant evidence on this floodplain for pottery firings. The problem, of course, with Salado pottery is that a lot of these sites that were once huge producers of that polychrome pottery, the areas around them where this pottery would have been fired are ruined. Earlier this year, I was up at Reeve Ruin and Davis Ranch on the San Pedro River, which were huge Salado producing villages in that area. And the areas where they would have brought the pots to fire, places where there was more abundant firewood down by the river, had all been torn up for farmland. It had all been plowed and re-sculpted and recontoured and berms had been built. So if there was any evidence of pottery firings, it was probably lost long ago. In the Safford area, the same thing. Lots of those sites don't even exist anymore because they've been plowed under. Certainly a lot of that pottery producing areas near the Gila River are lost. Unfortunately, I'm finding the same thing here at Klein Point. It's, this site sits up on a bluff above what would have been Tonto Creek. But about 100 years ago, they built a dam, Roosevelt Dam and Roosevelt Lake. And so the very top of the lake comes up and covers the floodplain just at the base of this bluff. So I was hoping to look along that floodplain for those oxidized firecracked rocks and some sherds. But unfortunately, it's either flooded or it's covered with driftwood, places where it had been underwater and is now not. So this site is probably a bust for finding that evidence of Salado polychrome pottery production. Reeve and Davis Ranch is also a bust. We need to look at that list of known Salado polychrome production sites and then see how many of those actually have undeveloped areas around them that can be looked at for evidence of pottery firings. So here we've got Roosevelt Lake. On the San Pedro, we have farming activity. In Safford, we have urban development as well as farming activity. Uh, the list is dwindling. Let's see what we can find and uh, hopefully find it soon before that last evidence of how Salado polychrome pottery was fired is lost forever. Okay, let's talk really fast about what's left after a surface firing. This is a spot where I fired about a month and a half ago. And unlike usually, I did not put this fire out. So people today are taught to always put your fires out. But back in the olden days, people didn't always put their fires out. In fact, usually they let them burn down to ashes. And that's what I did here. I wanted to illustrate what a firing, an old firing would have looked like back in those days. And so we've had some rain, we've had a lot of wind, and this really illustrates what's left. Uh, we've got some ash. We've got a little bit of char, but more than anything, we've got a lot of oxidized, blackened, and firecracked rocks. I think this is our primary indicator, this cluster of rocks, because the ash is gonna go away from the wind and the rain. Uh, the charcoal is gonna stay, but it's gonna be broken down into smaller and smaller bits, and it's gonna be mixed with soil. And this is on a floodplain. So after a period of years, there may be inches of soil on top of this. It could be buried. Uh, the other thing we may have had here is broken sherds of pottery. If any pottery cracked during the firing, if any pieces of sherds were used as cover sherds or were otherwise used to prop up pottery in the firing, uh, we might have those broken bits of pottery in the firing as well. I did not break any in this firing, so of course there's none. But if I fired in this same area year after year after year over the course of maybe generations, uh, we would have a mix of a little bit of charcoal, uh, a little bit of ash, a lot of oxidized and fire cracked rocks and uh, some sherds, some broken sherds, some burned sherds, sherds that are blackened from the firing, sherds that have maybe been fired more than once, which you can tell by looking at the cross section. Not a lot of evidence, especially if this was a one-time firing and then nobody ever fired here again. Eventually it'd be very hard to recognize this as a firing location. I think this is what we have going on across the Southern Southwest. A lot of places where people fired, never fired again, and the evidence is just so slim, that's one of the reasons we're not seeing these. So this is a great example of what I'm looking for 
here I am, I'm near a large ruin near the base of the Chiricahua Mountains. This was not a Salado Polychrome production site, but of course, like most sites, they were making planeware pottery, corrugated pottery, other types. I'm across the creek, maybe a couple hundred yards away from the ruin, across the creek and up a little rise, and there's these clusters, these, these concentrations of oxidized and firecracked rocks strewn all along this area. So you can see, not only are they cracked from the heat, they're all red. The rocks in this area are not naturally red, they're naturally gray or tan in color. So they've obviously been oxidized and then, like I said, fire cracked. So the other thing about this that indicates to me that it could have been a pottery firing location is that the rocks are all around the same size. They're about fist size. There are some sherds in this area, but not a lot. Not enough to really say yay or nay, in my opinion, uh, because there's a site a few hundred yards away. Uh, but it certainly is a clue that these may have been pottery firing locations. Certainly some archeology span could be done here to learn more about these. Okay, this is a different ruin on a different day, but this is a very similar situation to those, those rock piles I showed you at the previous site. Now, this ruin's about 30 miles north of the last one I showed you. And like that one, uh, we're across a creek uh, several hundred yards from the ruin itself in an area where there would have been water, there would have been more trees that they could have used for fuel. And in this area, there's a lot of these piles with oxidized and fire cracked rock. Each one of the rocks is around the same size, almost like somebody has purposely collected them here. Uh, and there's quite a few of these in this area. And there's quite a few sherds, broken pottery sherds on the ground as well. You know, once again, we have no way of knowing that this is a kiln. Uh, perhaps archeology span could help us with that at some point, but uh, as it is, uh, we can speculate. It certainly does look like perhaps someplace where pottery would have been fired. And so, like the previous site, this one did not produce Salado Polychrome. This site was a consumer of Salado Polychromes, like the previous one, but not a producer. And so, even though these may help us understand pottery production in the 1300s in Southern Arizona, it may not really answer the question of how Salado Polychrome was fired, because I have a feeling it may have been a very unique process compared to what was used to produce plain and utilitarian wares, which were produced at this village. So having visited a few of those sites and given it a lot of thought, here's what I think was going on in those days. The few Salado Polychrome producing villages were mass exporters of pottery. They were producing a vast quantity of pottery because they were supplying villages all over the place. This is very similar to those Hopi villages on Antelope Mesa. They were exporters of pottery, so they were producing a lot of it. And like the Hopi, they were taking their pottery to the fuel to fire it. In the case of the Hopis, they were bringing that to the base of the mesa where there were coal seams. And fortunately for us, to this day, that area remains virtually undeveloped and pristine. Here in southern Arizona, bringing your pottery to the fuel meant firing it along creeks and rivers, along floodplains. Now this is problematic for two reasons. Uh, along those floodplains, more and more soil was accumulating. It was building up. Every time that river flooded, it would leave a layer of soil. And so those firing sites are now likely underneath feet of topsoil. So not easily found just by walking along the floodplain. The other problem is these sites along the floodplains are places that are good for agriculture. And so modern agriculture is largely destroyed these areas by plowing and recontouring and leveling these sites to the point where there's probably nothing left of those prehistoric firing locations where Salata Polychrome was made in mass quantities 700 years ago. So what are we hoping to find at this point? Hopefully we can find one of these Salata Polychrome production villages that is on a creek that has not been used for modern agriculture. And hopefully that has an arroyo cut. So a deeply entrenched arroyo where we can look and see those layers of strata. See a layer that was the surface 700 years ago and perhaps find one of those firing locations exposed. If you're an archeologist who's interested in finding firing locations, now is the time to act. This is not something to put off for another generation. In the past 50 years, we've lost We've lost probably hundreds or thousands of potential Salado firing locations. 
to agriculture and to just plain old development. These areas out here in the Aravipa and Sulphur Springs Valley are being developed now. Ranches are being subdivided into lots and people are putting houses on them. And once these are all divided up and all have houses on, it's very hard to get permission to go out there and look at all these pieces of land or look through somebody's yard. And some people just don't want you out there traipsing around. It's very important that we find these Salado firing locations while they're still available. And, and I think there's a limited window of opportunity. I think there's only a few of them left as it is. So today I'm out here near the Crescent Ruin. This was the only Salado polychrome production site in the Aravipa and Sulphur Springs Valleys. So again, a mass exporter for probably 100 to 150 years during the time that Salado polychromes were being manufactured. This is an area where the floodplain has not been used for modern agriculture and there is a deeply entrenched arroyo. So I'm gonna walk up the arroyo and see what I can find. Look at that. Perforated plate shirt out here on the floodplain. All by itself. Got to be a quarter mile from the site. There it is. Proof of pottery manufacture here. Near a layer of clay, too. Amazing. There's an abundance of shirts out on this floodplain. Uh, just, just a bunch. And I don't see any evidence of walls or uh, architectural features so you have to wonder what was going on if they were firing out here only or if this was a work area or what but um, there's there's a lot of shirts here we got oxidized fire cracked rock right here in amongst all the shirts so definitely an interesting area for uh, maybe pottery manufacturer or at least firing there's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze The dreams are not same for me standing by the shore while you're on the open sea cannot take this That might have been my most interesting discovery yet related to ancient pottery firing locations. I hope you enjoyed the video today and I hope you learned a thing or two. If you want to see another video where I'm exploring how ancient people lived, check out this one over here. I appreciate you coming along with me today. I'll catch you next time.